Hello. Welcome back to Biology 50. Today we're going to continue with Chapter 2. This chapter is about chemistry and how it relates to biology. In Chapter 2, we will begin in Section 1 discussing atoms and the elements. In Section 2, we'll talk about the very basics of biochemistry. In section three, we'll talk about the properties of water and why water is so important for life. In section four, we'll talk about pH, acids, and bases. In section five, we'll talk about polymers, long strings of molecules. And finally, in section six, we'll talk specifically about the four macromolecules of life. Section one, the atoms. Organisms are made up of matter, so let's begin by describing what is matter. Matter is everything that has mass and takes up space. Mass you can think of as giving objects weight. If an object is in a gravitational field like on the Earth, then gravity will be exerted on it and it'll have weight. There are three normal states or phases of matter. These three states are solid, liquids, and gases. As you can see in this picture, the molecules in a solid are all tightly packed and the object has a consistent shape. In liquids, the molecules, they kind of fall around each other, though they are still fairly tightly packed. And in a gas, you can see the molecules are all dispersed. They're filling up the whole volume of the container and they're fairly far apart from each other. What is matter composed of? The ancient Greek philosopher Democritus first proposed that matter is made of tiny indivisible units he called atoms. He proposed that you can cut an object into tinier and tinier pieces, but eventually you get to something so small it's uncuttable. Democritus called this uncuttable unit the atom, which literally means indivisible. He was very close to describing modern day atomic theory. He also correctly proposed that atoms are always in motion. It's amazing to think that he could have proposed such an accurate description of nature over 2000 years ago. So what are atoms? Atoms are the smallest unit of matter that maintains the properties of an element. We now know that matter is made up of atoms. But you might ask, what are atoms made of? Atoms are made up of even smaller particles called subatomic particles. There are three subatomic particles. Uh, protons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons. Neutrons have no charge or are neutral. And electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. The protons and the neutrons together cluster in the center of an atom, and we call this the nucleus. You can also see surrounding the nucleus in the picture to the left are electrons. These electrons, you could think of them orbiting the nucleus like planets around the sun. Different atoms have different atomic numbers. The atomic number of an atom is equal to the number of protons that is found within that atom. The atomic number also determines the element that the atom belongs to. What is an element? An element is matter that has the same number of protons. Elements cannot be broken down by ordinary chemical means. And each unique element has its own distinct characteristics. For example, oxygen is a colorless, odorless gas at room temperature, while gold is a shiny, yellowish metal that's solid at room temperature. There are 118 total different elements. Of those, only 92 are naturally occurring. The others are synthetically produced in a lab. Dmitry Mendeleev, pictured here on the right, is one of the first scientists we know of to group the different elements together based on their different characteristics. 
Today we group the elements based on their atomic number, and we call this chart the periodic table. Some of the elements are more commonly found in life than others, and the six elements that are the most commonly found in living organisms are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. I like to call these the CHNOPs elements to remember which ones they are. Here we have the periodic table of the elements. The periodic table displays the elements as a unique box. Within each box is the atomic number, the chemical symbol, and the atomic weight for each element. The atomic number again represents the number of protons that is found in the atom of each element. So for example, hydrogen's atomic number is one. That means hydrogen atoms have one proton. Over here, we have helium. Helium's atomic number is two. So helium atoms have two protons in the nucleus. Similarly, lithium has three protons in its nucleus. Beryllium has four. Also pictured on the periodic table is the chemical symbol for each element. The chemical symbol is an abbreviation of the element's name. Usually it's the first letter or the first two letters of the element's name. So hydrogen is symbolized with a letter H, helium HE, neon NE. Some elements use the Latin name as the basis for their chemical symbol. So for example, number 11, sodium, its Latin name is natrium, so its chemical symbol is Na. The Latin name for potassium is callium, and so its chemical symbol is K. We will talk about the atomic weight of each element further in this lecture. This diagram is depicting two different ways to illustrate the structure of an atom. On the right, we have the less accurate but easier to understand model of the atom where again we have the nucleus in the center, it's made of protons and neutrons, and the electrons swirling around the nucleus at fixed distances, kind of like the planets orbiting the sun. To the left, we have a more accurate and more modern understanding of the structure of an atom. The nucleus remains at the center of the atom, but the electrons move in a much more erratic motion and form more of a cloud around the nucleus instead of distinct orbits. Another important property of an atom is the atomic mass. Atomic mass is the mass of an atom. You can think of it as like the weight or how heavy an atom is. Each element on the periodic table will have atoms of different atomic masses. The periodic table indicates the atomic mass of each different element. So here you can see the atomic mass of a hydrogen atom is 1.008. The atomic mass of helium is 4.002. The unit for atomic mass is the AMU or atomic mass unit. This slide depicts several different important elements and some of their characteristics. So for example, we have hydrogen, its chemical symbol is H, atomic number is one, mass number is one or two, and its atomic mass is 1.01. .01. You can also see a depiction of the atom up above showing one proton in the nucleus and one electron swirling around it. Up to this point, all depictions of atoms have shown an equal number of protons and electrons. But what happens when you have an unequal number of protons and electrons? This is when we have what's called an ion. So ions are defined as atoms with an unequal number of protons and electrons. There are two types of ions. One type is called an anion. And this is when there are more electrons than protons. So these atoms usually gain electrons. Because electrons are negative, anions are negatively charged. Another, the other type of ion is a cation. Cations are when there are more protons than electrons. 
protons are positively charged, and so cations have a positive charge. The picture below is depicting a very common ion formation. On the left, we have sodium losing an electron and chlorine gaining the electron from sodium. Over to the right, we can see now sodium, having lost a negative charge, is now positive. And chlorine, having gained a negative charge, is now negative. So chlorine, in this case, is the anion, and sodium is the cation. Oftentimes, we change the name of anions. We drop the last few letters and add IDE to the end. So chlorine becomes chloride. Similarly, fluorine ions are called fluoride. Ions of opposite charge are attracted to each other. Positive ions are attracted to negative ions. So in the diagram below, sodium ions are positive. They are attracted to the negative chloride ions and they stick together giving you sodium chloride, which we commonly call table salt. A tip for remembering that cations are the ion with a positive charge is that cation has the letter T in it, and the letter T looks like a plus sign. A term very closely related to ion is electrolyte. For the purposes of this class, we can define electrolyte as an ion that's important for the health of our body. Electrolytes have an influence on the chemical reactions in our body, our body's water balance or osmosis, and the nerves and muscle function in our body. So electrolytes are one of the most important considerations in patient care. Drink your Gatorade. Another characteristic to know about atoms is the mass number. The mass number of an atom is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons that is found in the nucleus of an atom. The mass number is not indicated on the periodic table, but is usually written separately as a superscript to the left of the chemical symbol. Here's an example of carbon. Carbon usually has six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus, and so therefore its mass number would be 12. Here's an important tip. Please don't confuse the following three terms, atomic number, mass number, and atomic mass. Notice they all kind of sound alike, but they all mean very different things. So to review, atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. The mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons in an atom. And the atomic mass is equal to the mass or the weight of an atom. We've talked about how atoms are composed of three different types of subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. When you alter the number of protons in an atom, that would change the element that the atom belongs to. If you change the number of electrons, we saw how that will affect the ion of an atom. And finally, if you change the number of neutrons, that's going to change the isotope of the atom. Isotopes are atoms of an element with different numbers of neutrons. Here we have two different isotopes of hydrogen. On the left, there's a hydrogen atom that has one proton and one electron. This is known as hydrogen one. This is the normal, most commonly found hydrogen in the universe. To the right, we have a hydrogen atom with one proton and one neutron in the nucleus. This is known as hydrogen two or deuterium. Notice that the mass number of deuterium is two. Some isotopes are unstable. 
Unstable isotopes release radiation. This is known as radioactive decay. When an isotope decays, you can think of it as blowing up or coming apart. As an isotope decays, the radiation that's released can be picked up by detectors. Some radioactive isotopes are frequently used in medicine. They can be used for imaging or as tracers. For example, radioactive iodine is used to assess the health of a thyroid. In the picture on the left, you can see a thyroid gland treated with radioactive iodine. Radioactive glucose can be used in PET scans to assess the health of a brain. On the right, you can see a GIF of a brain treated with radioactive glucose. That concludes part one of our chapter two voiceover lecture. Stay tuned for part two.